Welcome to the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's the 28th of April. Uh, looking forward to a, a, good, a good session today. Um, let's talk over, let's review our um, agenda and then we'll work through it. So Simon Simhoven has a presentation for us on a project that he's been working on. I believe it's specifically related to GitHub pull request status reporting inside the Jenkins UI. Uh, then Uli, st status of Bootstrap 5 migration for plugins. Um, I've got an pending action item on uh, an online meetup for the dev environment setup experience with Uli. Uli, I'm behind on that. Sorry, I haven't sent the invitation yet. I haven't even sent the proposal yet. I'll get to that. Uh, pending UX changes. Uh, we had the pipeline visualization demo. There were some other changes that I think, Tim, you may want to, to highlight for us. And then Damien, we had a topic on multiple pipelines for a branch, multi-branch job. Any other topics we should include on our agenda today? Okay, then let's, let's get started and Simon, you're the you're the first one up. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and that should allow you to share. Perfect, thank you. But I cannot share my screen. Oh, oh, wait, oh, no. Oh, no, no. So, have a look. Can you see my screen now? We can, yes, thank you. So, so in the last few weeks, I developed a pull request monitoring plugin for the Jenkins. Um, so um, the plugin offers a possibility to possibility to to display um, and aggregate results in form of individual view. Dashboard. So you can uh, configure the dashboard via the Jenkins pipeline or um, inside of the Jenkins um, in, the, in the dashboard itself. So um, I connected um, my, my pull request monitoring uh, GitHub project here and opened a pull request to, for the demo today. So I can show you the plugin. Here's the action on the left side. And I configured the Jenkins pipeline as follows. I will show you right now. Just a second. My second screen. Yeah. So you have the possibility to, to define um, individual views um, with the key and the width, the height, and the color. Um, and if the, the run is built, the action will add it to the dashboard and the configurable views will show here in the inside of the dashboard. Um, you have the possibility to, to drag and drop it, rearrange um, the format. You can delete one and can add it back again with different color, different size and so on. And the dashboard uh, shows you each time the, the actual um, configuration and you can copy it if you want and add it back to your, to your um, Jenkins file to update. Oops, uh, to update basically the, the next run of the monitor plugin. So um, the views will update with the next run on the dashboard. So that's basically the plugin. And yes, that was a quick demo for today. Okay, so and what sorts of content can be inserted? Or are, are you okay with questions, Simon? Or, yes, or, yes, of course, of course. So what types of content can be placed inside the these these monitor panes? Everything you want. Uh, I built the demo with two e charts of Mr. Hafner's plugins um, and one with static um, HTML content. 
if you want to provide a view, I did it here in my project. I had, um, let's begin with the second one. You have to implement the um, interface monitor view and define a title and the ID. Usually the ID of the view is the class name and each view um, has to have a corresponding monitor jelly view where it defines the, uh, the plugin content to show on the dashboard. And the factory um, will create the views. Um, for example, if you have uh, multiple views of the of the um, of one class of the class first, you can uh, define via the factory the different um, different uh, plugin IDs to have uh, yeah basically two two instances of the same class. So we basically have an extension point here, and every plugin who wants to contribute can contribute some content. So this is some kind of build view, but it's a special view because you, you not only have the build, you also have the pull request that is part of this build. So if you have a plugin that wants to work on a pull request, you can show information. For instance, in my warnings plugin, I can show the number of new warnings in this pull request. Or in the Git plugin, we can show the number of new commits from this pull request. So it's basically up to the other plugin what to show. Yes, exactly. Okay, so so for instance, the, the Git plugin could contribute to this by saying, ah, here are the number of lines added, the number of lines deleted, or here are the here are the number of commits, or here are the some a, a visual of the who the committers are. Yes. Okay. So I think the project is uh, divided in two different parts. One part is the drag and drop thing, the, the, yeah, the dashboard. And the other part is the extension point. We will provide a default implementation for the warnings plugin, first of all. And then, yeah, we'll see if anybody else <laughs> likes to contribute. I think Thanks. there are a lot of possibilities to add here. And so, so in the in terms of the warnings plugin, you're envisioning things like I could see incremental code coverage report in there, or I could see an incremental uh, check style warnings, or an incremental uh, report of oh, this these are the things that were. Let's see, what are some of the others? The Java doc warnings or the Java compiler warnings that these are all incremental as a result of that pull request. That was the idea. Yes. Because currently this is done in my plugin just for my plugin and not on a level up in the hierarchy. And it would be helpful if this could be done by every plugin to show a delta in a pull request. That's, that's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, questions from others. I don't mean to be the only one asking questions. Uh, <laughs> others are welcome to ask questions too. We have one. Um, so, that's really good job. I really like the, the full uh, the full loop that you can generate the code and use it back. Um, yeah. I understand that the configuration is based on the pipeline contents. There, are, there is no um, right now user defined configuration. For instance, if I want a dashboard inverted compared to my colleague, but on the same pull request, is it possible or is it a plan or is it out of the scope? Um, at the moment, the configuration is saved um, per, per project, um, but you can rearrange the, um, the dashboard locally, mm -hmm. but with the next run, uh, the configuration is loaded back again from the Jenkins file. So each project mm -hmm. basically has one configuration at the moment, but yeah, yes, we can think about it and implement it. Okay. You write the content to the local storage of the browser? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is there a reason you don't save it in like the user's profile? Mm -hmm. mm, no, not really. Just wondering, so it stays across browsers and computers and sort of thing. 
You mean Jenkins profile? Yes. Okay, never used it yet. Yeah. Okay. Which would yeah, be so a good idea, yeah? maybe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you'd add a user property for it um, and then save it via some JavaScript request. Um, and then, yeah, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be relying on the browser for storing the state. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure though how that will under, I'm thinking a lot, but if there is a big change on what information is, uh, is shown in the view from the pipeline, if you have your own and there is a conflict during the merge configuration, um, it can be not an, an easy problem to solve to define which one is the most prior and because you can define priority, but if someone decided to remove all the, to remove like the third one, and you still have it on your local user profile, that may be a complicated uh, topic, while the current one defined by pipeline is already is this, is this tied to the job, is it? Or is it tied to the user as a whole? Like, what are you storing in the local storage? The local storage is save only uh, this. Uh, sorry. So basically the JSON file from the Jenkins plugin. So um, I get the, the key, the width, the height, and the color. Um, and if I rearrange it. Right. So that looks like it's stored at the for the whole Jenkins instance, right? It's not just the job that you're yes. looking at. Yes. Yeah, so the job uh, is saved here as a key. So I have the oh, okay. progress monitoring custom, uh, custom dashboard and my right. own monitoring grid order key. So if I um, open another dashboard, this, uh, the default dashboard without a pipeline, um, and open the dashboard here, I will have an empty dashboard because the Jenkins pipeline is empty. And I can add. Right, sure. Project for the default dashboard now. Yeah, and you can do this. Yeah, so, so local, local storage would work just the same. Well, the, the user profile would work just the same if you went that approach. Is there an extension point for the profile that we can use? Yeah, user property, I think. Okay, I'll have a look at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd have Thank to you. cr create an API, like expose an API to get the information, but yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Simon. So in terms of the, the list of possible views that you, that appeared when you click the plus sign on the right hand side, those are the views contributed by plugins plus views that may have been defined in pipelines or um, you mean this list here? Of yes, right. Um, I will iterate uh, over the extension points um, of the install plugins of the Jenkins um, and yeah, search all plugins that implement and or provide a view for this for my plugin. Okay, so this this is where warnings ng, for instance, will will appear as a, a, a selectable a selectable yes. view, and they yes, the exactly. the name the the name I, I'm assuming won't be a full path. It will rather be something more descriptive or is it, is it limited to the IO, to the, the class path style naming? No, you can define your own ID, but um, okay. I used usually the, the class name um, for, for the instance here second. Um, and if I have a class with multiple instance, multiple instances, I define the key with an extra view one and view two key behind the class name. But you can, yeah, you can use whatever you want to. Yeah, you may want to separate ID from display name as well. Because um, I don't think we really want users to see a class name. It should be a description or display name. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Uh, maybe, other... oh, go ahead. Yeah, maybe it would be helpful if we have some style like it is in Jira where we can add this widgets which have a, a name and a, a preview. So 
let's see what the time gives us for here. <laughs> but I think starting simple with a good name is okay. And then we yeah. see if we get a, something else. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and I see the, the slot width and slot height units of four. Is that, is that, can you help me with the measurement on that? Is that 12 units is the total screen? Is it, what, 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 what do those units mean there? Now, one unit is 110 pixels. Oh, okay. All right. So it's yeah. pixels. Yeah. So it's uh, defined in the CSS style sheet of the, for the dashboard, I use Muri with JS. Um, and there you can define the size of um, each slot. Uh, with a pixel size in the CSS style. So I add uh, here, for example, yeah, the width and the height, 440 pixels width and height in the CSS style. Excellent, thank you. Any other questions from, from others? Maybe an additional comment. I think this dashboard view, if it is working out, very good. We can use it on the build view or on the job view as well, where we can rearrange our charts and everything else, which is currently a little bit strange only on the right side. So maybe it would be helpful to integrate it in, in other views as well. Yeah. Just you know, of my yeah. plugin, there is a link to the movie grid JS, so you can contribute to it or yeah, let's have a look. Nice. Um, I was going to add a general comment around there um, with thoughts kind of related to the mess of the job page, but it'd be great to look at redesigning at some point with a simple view um, where plugins can't just go crazy. And we just, if we have like defined contribution areas for things like minimal SCM information, things like commit, maybe PR title, code coverage area, um, test result area um, and like pipe, maybe some pipeline information or something. Um, but just having very specific minimal information that's only supplied like once, um, just decluttering the view and making it a lot cleaner. Because um, now if you run like Git plugin and you've got a library and maybe another library, you end up seeing the Git information multiple times. Um, it's not terribly relevant. Um, change log information, again, not terribly relevant most times. Time, timer sort of thing. Um, the page is pretty ugly, really. The, the, talking about the run page right now. Um, but yeah, just a general redesign of the run page and the job page. Um, I, I, Configurable is good for some, but in general, just a same page would be nice. Um, and plugins contributing elsewhere. <laughs> but because currently plugins just everyone wants to put their thing on their, their little badge. Um, but it's how do we get that there in a nice way and where shall it go? Because I don't think just clutter the page randomly is the solution. And some, so some of the user complaints, there... just, I was say like for, for the, um, how like sidebar got bigger, it was users who had lots of plugins were the ones who were mostly complaining. Yeah, so what you're saying before that? makes a lot of that? sense, Tim. Uh, no, just uh, actually the, the, your, your comments covered it, thank you. Simon, thanks very much. So, what's your what's your time frame? Tell us about tell us about how, about how the project is going to evolve. You're on a, I believe you're on a, a relatively strict schedule from the university, etc. So, tell us more about what's coming next. Um, I started the development of the plugin um, in March, I think, um, and I was finished it in July. So. I have uh, released the first beta version yesterday um, with Maiden. So let's have a look. I don't know what I have to do next or what I would want to do. Um, yeah. So the, the beta version of the plugin works. So I will um, add 
first views uh, in the plugins of Mr. Hafner, um, Warnings NG, and have a look if another contributor, yeah. Excellent. So it's already, and so is it already available from the Jenkins Update Center? Oh, I don't know. I ah, okay. So, so if you have a, if if you don't know, that probably means not yet. Uli, go ahead. Uh, the plugin page not found at the moment. Yeah, it's uh, because it has a beta suffix, and these things are not available in the update center in the official, just in the experimental. Uh, I Currently, we don't show any information yet, so you only have the dashboard with with yeah these fixed images. So, right. yeah. and so it'll it'll stay beta here for for a while. Do you do you hope to be ready to to make it more visible by end of by July end time, or is it going to need you know what's your sense there? Sorry. Again, please. Will you do you do you hope to be out of beta by July or? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. I think this is also something which can be iteratively defined, increased uh, because first we start with one view and then we see how much we can do. But I think it's already functional with one view. And I want to, to implement the first view with the one XNG plugin and uh, have a look if the, the interface I defined with the um, Jenkins file and so on um, will work as expected. Um, then I can release the first uh, version in the Maven Update Center and yeah, implement another monitor views from, uh, from other plugins. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. Thanks very, very much. Thanks for for sharing it and thank you for doing the work. That's great. Look forward to it. Any other thank any questions from others? Yeah. Oh, that's really cool work. Thanks for that. Thank you. All right. So I think we're ready to shift to to next next topic. Uh, unless Simon, there are other things that you've got that you wanted to highlight. No, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen then. Let's switch back to to the agenda. Oh. All right, so Uli, you had um, Bootstrap Five migration for plugins. Yeah, oh, sorry, was... I didn't take notes during Simon's message. I'll have to add the notes later. Yeah, uh, actually, this is just a, a, a small thing. Um, Currently, my plugins and some others as well use Bootstrap 4 in Jenkins. And what I'm currently, uh, what I'm doing is to uh, upgrade it to uh, Bootstrap 5, which is to be released in the next you know, weeks, let's say. Currently, we are in beta 3 of Bootstrap, and I migrated all my plugins now, and everything works quite fine. So I think when the bootstrap 5 will be available for in the version 5 i can switch all my plugins as well one thing which is still open is the data tables plugin which is not yet prepared for bootstrap 5 but they will do a migration as well hopefully in the next weeks as well so one thing which is a little bit unclear to me, I'm not sure, is Felix still around? Uh, I've never seen him unless in the last couple of meetings. He 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 certainly is around, but he's not actively participating in the UX SIG. His his work has shifted him to another area. Ah, okay. Because in in Jenkins Core, we already also have a Bootstrap a three a dependency which I wanted to replace with Bootstrap 4, but I think now it would make sense to create a pull request which replaces it with Bootstrap 5, so. Sorry. Yeah, so, okay. Um, then I'll, uh, I'll head up for a pull request for Jenkins Core. It, it will take a time until uh, Bootstrap 5 is released.
Very good. Okay, but so so cool. that's that's actually kind of breathtaking to me. I'm not accustomed to Jenkins UI libraries being upgraded concurrent with the with the release of the library. That's that's amazing. Thanks, Uli. Very good. Uh, are there any any known compatibility hits that that might affect others? So you've you say you've already upgraded to Bootstrap five and Warnings NG. No, yeah. no big surprises there. No, no, nothing special. The only thing is uh, in the JUnit plugin we have a dependency, and all other plugins don't use it yet. So the migration will be quite easy. Yeah. But I will have a look in the JUnit plugin. It's not so much what needs to be changed. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So the, the JUnit plugins tests are failing on the eCharts API upgrade recently. Huh. I haven't got a chance to look. Okay. I, I sent a link in the chat. Okay, thanks. I'll have a look at it. I... Excellent. So anything else on Bootstrap 5 migration? Okay, next topic was, I've still got the action item. Sincere apologies. I haven't created the abstract for the meeting yet. We've got a volunteer to act as the co-host, a brand new person who joined and uh, as proposing to uh, help with Jenkins online meetup. So Uli, we'll have you do the, the be the primary speaker, but the idea is I, me and this co-host will together ask you questions, go through this conversation. Let you show us what what how you sit, have the configuration set up so that students are able to successfully contribute quickly to Jenkins. Great. That's, uh, that's fine. Thank you. So, pending user experience changes. A reminder that the pipeline visualization plugin is has been released in a preliminary version. I've got it installed. I'm I continue to be impressed, even as a as a prototype it renders and I haven't found a pipeline that it doesn't render yet. So well done, Tim, thank you. Um, anything that you wanted to say on that further, Tim, or any other insights? No, I'd love to get back to it. I just haven't had time. Um, anyone who has time, love any contribution there. Currently um, buried in Azure SDK upgrades from, they have not been updated in years and absolute nightmare, but I spent the last few weeks on it. Uh, uh, understood. So thank you very much. Any other pending UX changes that you'd like to highlight or that others would like to highlight? There's the run tables to div thing that I just don't have the energy to deal with, but um, it's not. Yeah, so that and that that I think you'd noted earlier in the notes that hey, it's it's just on hold for now. Yeah, it's fairly straightforward. I just got other things to do. Understood. All right. Damien, next topic was multiple pipelines for a multi-branch job. So I tried to join the last SIG for pipeline offering, but it looks like that there were no meeting, or at least no one driving it, uh, did not have much time. So the next step will be sending a mail to the developer mailing list to underline, to ask the question of uh, what are, what will be the, were there already um, attempt to have, uh, to manage multiple pipeline? What were the thoughts, the, what could have been written? That means also for myself having to, to search a bit the Jira at least. Uh, asking the questions, then uh, we'll see if uh, someone is ready or not. Without any answer, I think I will go, if I don't have any answer or any feedback for, for the next two weeks, uh, my goal is then to find, a, let's say, a, a, a second person to back with me to help me on developing on that part so, so, so we can get started with a POC. Uh, the idea is not to produce a POC, but to write down the ideas. I'm not sure if a GEP is the correct tool for this, but at least writing something like um, a state, written statement of what is the scope, what are the goals, 
what are the must have, the nice to have, the idea and the goal, just to be sure that we can share that and say, okay, we're gonna build something based from that. Yeah, we've, in terms of those, those kinds of ideas, that sounds quite similar to the technique we've used with Google Summer of Code project ideas, where we will sort of hoist them up, discuss them publicly, uh, review them, use a, use a public document as a review place. That's the kind of thing you're envisioning here as well, then? I think so, yes. Great. Any other topics that we need to discuss today? All right, recording will be posted separately. Hi. Thanks for, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, am I audible? Yes, you are, go ahead, Diraj. Yes, so I have a really small doubt that I posted uh, yesterday uh, about a small miss, like a, a pic I posted yesterday on Gator channel uh, about the job view filter plugin. Okay, so this was a, a question that you ha had on on the Gitter channel. Uh, can Can you hear me? Yes, sure can. Well, actually, I got disconnected. I'm, I apologize. So my my question is that I uploaded the photo and it needed some changes as suggested by Tim as well. So do we want to make those changes? So uh, yeah, I'm adding the message. I'm pointing the message. Uh, it sounds like that what you posted sounds like a bug on the rendering of an um, of a specific widget. Is my understanding correct? So you posted yes. the screenshot where there is ah oh, okay the checkbox is before a title. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, I might not have all the context, but did you uh, did you try to open the Jira issue because it sounds like a bug, and the idea is to provide as much information as possible to allow someone else on another machine, another Jenkins instance, to reproduce the issue. So we would need oh. you to open a, an issue telling us mm -hmm. which version of Jenkins you are using, mm -hmm. uh, the plugin versions that you are using that could be related to, to that widget. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the generic uh, reporting information. And personally, I don't know exactly what feature it is, but the goal is um, to explain how we can reproduce the same issue, which web browser you are using, just to be sure it might be web browser specific also. So the goal is to allow us to have info, that kind of information. And then uh, someone will search, confirm uh, based on that info, and we can seek for a fix. Or if you already have an idea, you can totally start to contribute on that fix if you if you have this information as well. Okay. Is my so understanding saying, correct? Cool. Yes, yes. So what you are saying is uh, I need to open an issue and provide all the specification that I have so that you can reproduce the same issue to your PC to check whether it's common or not. And then I or anyone else can work on it, right? That is correct. Understood. Thank you so much. Don't hesitate to post on the Gitter channel uh, the link to the issue once you will have opened it. So it will act as a reminder for the for the SIG. Sounds good? Definitely. Thanks a lot for reporting this. Yeah, so Diraj, I see, I see your comment on the channel. My apologies that I don't think we've had... Oh, oh, I see. Oh, and Tim had asked, okay, build statuses should be above. And yeah, so I think what he's saying is that there is a... Yeah, there are layout fixes needed. So go ahead and propose a, a, a bug report. And that I think may be something you can even propose then propose the fix for it as well. Yes, that's the aim from my side, but I would need some help. Like where do I need to start? Like where that particular code is. So after that, I can definitely work on it. That's the aim. Great. Yeah. So if you if you provide us a little bit more detail in an issue report, we will happily help. Definitely. Thank you. Is this Thank plugin you. still maintained that has this checkbox in it? 
do you know this plugin? I, I think that was part of his question was which plugin ah. is it? What's contributing this component? Oh, I thought it's a job view filter plugin. Sorry. It's my I thought it is clear with this which plugin is the problem. Ah. Okay. So so let's showing my ignorance. Uli, you read very well. I think that's exactly what it says. The view job filters plugin. So that is a separate plugin. And it's easy to check to see what its health is. View job filters. Okay, there is a view job filters plugin. It was last released 11 months ago. And so it's it's had some some work in the last 12 months, relatively minor, looks like from Jesse Glick, and that's about it. So, but it it it's at least active enough that it's released within the last year. So Diraj, it may be that you just take the view job filters plugin and build it locally and then experiment with it to see if you can identify where that text is. Definitely I'll try this. Great, thank you. Any any other topics that should be discussed today? All right, recording will be posted uh, later today. Thanks everybody.